Hello everybody, how are you doing? In this web view, I've proposed a sea link connecting the city of Mumbai with the new Navi Mumbai airport. Now why do this? Navi Mumbai airport is going to be a big generator of traffic. Just take a look at the current Mumbai airport. It is bursting with the seams, even with the construction of the new terminal 2 three years ago. So there's going to be a lot of traffic wanting to go from the city of Mumbai to Navi Mumbai and the airport and beyond and vice versa. Currently the quickest way to go between the two places is via the Sain Panvel Expressway but that gets ridiculously choked both over the Thane Keek bridge right here and the junction with the Thane Belapur road. So this will reroute that traffic and traffic going to the airport onto a new integrated C expressway which is 6 lanes and has a speed limit of 100 km per hour. Travel time from this junction right here with the eastern freeway with the airport right here will only be 18 minutes. That's not a lot of time. So the bridge itself has a length of 11.7 km and it has two cable stays. The first of which is 550 meters long and the second of which is 1110 meters long and this will allow container ships to connect with the Trombay ports and the Navi Mumbai airports without having to deviate too much. So in addition to just serving Navi Mumbai and Mumbai it has a lot more potential. First which it easily connects the city of Mumbai with Pune so all the Pune traffic won't have to go onto the Sain Panvel expressway so that traffic gets relieved as well. In addition, there are provisions to allow a connection to the BKC or Bandra Kurla complex which is going to be the next big business district of Mumbai. So this connects with the Shavri Chambur link road which allows easy provision for an extension to go to the BKC complex right here. The BKC complex grew mainly because of the presence of Mumbai airport and I do think many businesses will grow in Navi Mumbai based on the construction of the new airport. But how do we connect the two? this intersection right here will serve to do that. Now before I get into the actual intersections themselves, I'm going to show you what the colors mean. I'm going to place them on a key but let's go through them nonetheless. So blue is the, where the expressway will be built on the ground. So there's no marshes, water, creeks or roads to go over. And the main expressway as I said is six lanes, three lanes each direction. The purple is standard beam and pylon construction. So all the intersections and basic flyovers will have that as well as a majority of the ceiling. The rest of the ceiling will be on the cable states sections right here which are yellow. Now let's zoom in to where this expressway starts. And I would just zoom in here but some of these intersections get complicated. So I've decided to model them onto a simulation called City Skylines and that depicts very well what the lane situation and levels of these interchanges are. So I'm going to show you this interchange right here which connects the new expressway with both the Eastern Freeway and the Shavery Chamber Link Road right now. So this is the model I created for the new interchange. I apologize if the frame rates are a bit low because I'm using my college ultrabook instead of my gaming PC but I'll try my best to make this as cool as possible. So let's go through the roads that currently exist because they'll be unchanged. You have the Chambur Shavri link road which connects from Chambur right here and goes to Shavri in the south. In the southern portion right here it is split by the eastern freeway viaduct. The eastern freeway connects eastern chamber right here all the way onto this viaduct here. It's six lanes here, it goes onto a four lane viaduct and connects with the fort and CST area after 10 kilometers. So all the new bridges will be built on top of what is existing. So coming from Navi Mumbai, motorists have the option to go directly onto the link road going north to Chambur and eventually the BKC via this new flyover right here. They also have the option to go to South Mumbai directly. So they take this flyover here and that will connect to the existing Eastern Freeway which goes to South Mumbai. 
What if they want to go to northwestern central Mumbai, for example, Worli and Shavri? Well, they just go on this ramp right here onto the Chambur Shavri link road, and that takes them right there. Coming from various places in Mumbai to the new bridge, they can either come from South Mumbai onto this new two lane ramp, which goes above the existing viaduct and onto the new bridge, or they can go from the Chambur Shavri Rink Road from especially Worli and Shavri right here. And that goes a little bit north of all the other flyovers. And that connects with the third ramp coming from Chambur. And this all directly connects to the new bridge. So the point of this is that I don't want the bottom roundabout, which is existing already. I don't want that to become a big traffic knot. I want traffic to flow as smoothly as possible. And I understand this is basically a four level interchange and it will be Mumbai's first four level interchange if built. But the potential of this is big. There's going to be a lot of traffic flowing through here. This can be a big junction point in the entire Mumbai metropolitan area. So with that out of the way, let's go back to Google Earth and continue on with the actual bridge. So this is a better geometric representation of the location of all the new flyovers. It doesn't give a good visual representation on how they are in relative to each other, but that's what City Skylines was for. So I like to give both perspectives of new interchange I do. So this is the pure geometric perspective. So after that, the six lane carriageway continues onto a bridge before actually going on the ground for 1.2 kilometers. It parallels the Trombe Creek until actually crossing it onto a simple beam bridge right here. After that, it continues onto the land. It goes under a power line. This may have land acquisition problems, but I've assumed that it doesn't. So it goes under the power lines and continues for 1.4 kilometers before it starts the bridge. So this bridge has a total length of 11.7 kilometers. All sections will be 30 meters above the sea. So this portion right here will be constructed using a simple beam and pylon method. But this yellow portion right here will be our first cable stayed section. And I'm going to show it to you right now. So this is a cross section of the Western cable stay just south of Trombe. I have the times two here because in reality, there's another one right behind this because it's a six lane dual carriageway, similar to the Bandra Worli sea link. Now, as I said, the height is exactly 30 meters above the sea level and it has one major tower with cables extending up to 225 meters from the center, allowing maximum width of container ships passing through to be 225 meters. This is sufficient for smaller and medium sized container ships with which transport goods to and from Trombe. So after the cable stay, the bridge continues onto its beam and pillar construction for a little bit. It goes over the jetty pier, but that should not be an issue since the bridge is already 30 meters above the sea. But this jetty pier brings me to a possible downfall of this construction besides cost. It is a fact that this bridge passes within two kilometers of Gharapuri Island, also home of the Elephanta Caves. This is meant to be a scenic retreat from the hustle and bustle of Mumbai. But when you're building a bridge this close to especially the main face of the island, there's bound to be opposition, especially from natural scenicists and environmentalists alike. But assuming this bridge is built, it will continue on a route similar to what I have here. And it continues across the Thane Creek until it reaches the next yellow section, which is the next cable stay. This is a total length of 1110 meters and has two main towers. So on the Eastern cable stay here, again, this is twice as wide because we have the double carriageway, but this is different. There are two discrete main towers each with a gradient of cables going out. So it's the same size. So the outer two spans still have a span length of 225 meters, but the central one has double that 550 meters. So even the largest container ships connecting to Trombe and Navi Mumbai can easily pass under here. So after that, the bridge continues onto its standard bridge and column construction before finally arriving on the mainland just north of Uran right here. So we're actually really close to the airport. There's only 2.1 kilometers before we get to the next interchange right here. And until then, this is all be built on the existing land. So I'll have some two lane flyovers connecting indirectly 
with the Uran Road South, which connects more with the Konkan region, for example, Adilbag and Penn, more directly than having to go further north into the Navi Mumbai airport area. Just north of here, we have some small bridges to go over marshes, which encroach onto the lands that this expressway will be built on. And speaking of marshes, this is the second environmental and visual criticism that this project brings. This is probably going to be some relatively middle class to upper class neighborhoods built to be secluded from the hustle and bustle right by the sea. But if this expressway is here, much of the hustle and bustle comes back. So there will always be a little debate on whether or not the routing should go like this or further inland. But going like this is definitely more cost efficient. So after that, it continues and it reaches the airport. But just before the airport, we have this interchange right here. This is a good geometrical representation, but not a very good visual representation. So you can guess what I'm about to do. That's right, I'm going back to city skylines. This looks a lot better, right? So this is much easier to explain than the last one, obviously. It's basically just a three-way stack interchange. So the ramps coming from the Uran Road southbound to the new Mumbai bound bridge and vice versa will be on the second level. However, coming from the airport to the Uran Road northbound to Belapur and further inner areas of Navi Mumbai will be on the third level. Now you may be wondering, what about the fourth direction? Well, that was just what the previous intersection served. That fly were connected to another link road going to Uran Road South and that will serve for most of the Konkan traffic. So after the stack interchange, the road goes into the airport itself. Now some people may be asking, what does the height of the stack interchange have to obstruct on the new runways and flights coming in and out? Well, I'm glad to say that this is a good 750 meters from each runway approach. So the height of this interchange should not be a problem at all. So it continues into the airport. I'm not going to go into too much detail because as I said, this image I've got from the actual designers of the airport. And thank you so much to those people who made this. It saves a lot of time for me to actually focus on the web views themselves. But this is a basic design of what the airport will be. And the highway continues through that. Just after that, it goes over a bridge or the small creek before reaching a new similar Y interchange as a one to the Uran road link to the Konkan area. This particular one connects to the old Mumbai Pune highway and central Panvel. So it connects to both the eastern part of Uran road also known as NH4C and eventually to the actual NH4 right here. So this goes into the central part of Panvel. What if you don't want to go into Panvel? Well, there's two more places where you can go. So right after this junction right here, the entire road becomes a viaduct. And this is six lanes. So it will become four lanes continuing on the viaduct. The outer two lanes will connect to NH4C, which go to where, like for example, Dombuli Kalyan, this serves for that traffic. The remaining four lanes will continue on a new viaduct or flyover just east of the existing NH4C and it goes and continues before turning to the east and joining the Mumbai Pune Expressway. So very easy travel to Pune as well guys. So let's zoom out and see from where we have come. So there you have it my friends, a 12.5 kilometer bridge which is only part of a longer 28 kilometer expressway connecting Mumbai city directly with the airport, Navi Mumbai and the Mumbai Pune Expressway. Lots of potential, lots of possible routes that can use this. It alleviates traffic from the existing Sain Panvel Highway and the inner parts of Navi Mumbai. It allows more growth opportunities, especially in the airport and also indirectly in the BKC complex. So before I leave, let's go through the tolls. So I think the tolls of this should be around 150 rupees, which is around $2.75. Obviously no rickshaws will be allowed because A, rickshaws are not allowed in South Mumbai and second, they cannot travel the full 100 km per hour speed. Also I'm thinking heavy trucks should be banned. Light trucks, okay, but those heavy Tata trucks, 
or lorries as they call them there? Probably not. They will slow down traffic and many people are going to be driving on this. These are going to be mostly like middle to upper class executives and the automobile landscape is drastically changing in India. More and more people are able to afford cars and they want a quick connection between Navi Mumbai and Mumbai. Obviously, there are other possibilities that can be done with this. What about a train from the airport to the city? That may be another webio, but I think road traffic has the biggest potential right now. So I would like to thank you guys for watching this. It was great fun to model this and draw this in Google Earth. I hope I see you guys back very soon. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.